Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's uh, Wednesday, not Thursday. We're starting a day early. Um, tomorrow, Nick Birch, my business partner, and I, we need to fly up to the Connecticut, so we figured we do our live stream a day early. So here we are, and I've got Dustin who's sitting behind me today. Come on over, say hi, Dustin. Hey, see, man. now you guys get to see what he looks like. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> so uh, we got Dustin here. And uh, I'm just going to animate today, um, working on the same shot that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've just been getting little bits here and there because I've had to go out of town, come back. and <clears throat> Anyway, we're working on getting this thing done. We're hoping to have it done by next week, uh, all colored and shadows and everything else. But what I've been working on is, um, if you remember last week, I was doing in-betweens to smooth out the action, to get everything nice and fluid. And, uh, and I'm almost there. So I'm just going to continue with that. Um, Yesterday on Facebook, I in between this section through here and got it nice and fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and play the whole shot. And then you'll see when we come up into this section here, um, I've got some slow-ins to, to put in here. Um, slow-ins me meaning, you know, when you have a character pose, um, the, the drawings kind of slow into that pose. So it gradually slows and then it takes off again. And so that's what I'm going to be working on today. But there's the animation so far. You can see we got it nice and smooth with all of our in-betweens so far up to this point. See where it slows down in there? And so we're just going to add some in-betweens through here today and, uh, and smooth out some of that action. Um, this is the process that we always did at Disney. You know, you pose out, you know, whether it's even straight ahead animation, a lot of times you're not doing all of the drawings. And so you got to go back in and you got to add those drawings to smooth out the action and get everything moving nice and, nice and fluid. And so that's what I'm doing. So once again, I've got Dustin here. He's going to be answering questions because I'm going to be focused on, on this sucker here. And then I've got Nick Birch, my business partner. He's over in Sarasota, and he'll be typing away, answering any other questions that might come up. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. And, uh, and you guys just shoot. You know, we'll do like we always do. I'm just going to sit here and draw, and you guys uh, ask me questions. So here I've got him. And the other thing, too, is I want to really read it. Uh, reiterate what I've been talking about not just here on YouTube but also on Facebook is the importance of arcs in your animation you can see how everything arcs you know if when you can get those smooth arcs that's what adds fluidity and and basically a nice pleasing feel to your animation it gives it life getting those nice fluid arcs in there so that's what I'm gonna be working on here as he goes and stands up does your polar bear have a name you know, the polar bear doesn't have a name yet. I keep calling him Snow Bear, but he's not the Snow Bear. He's going to be making a Snow Bear. Um, I don't know. What uh, What should we call him? Let's take a... Let's take a uh, what do you guys think we should call him? You guys start typing in names. Bob. Bob. You know what? I like Bob. <laughs> Bob is the name of my ex-directing partner. Um, Bob and I, we directed Brother Bear together. And he was one of my best friends. He, we, were, we were very, very close. And uh, Bob passed away two years ago. But he was the first guy I met when I started at Disney. And um, and Bob was a man of very few words. Uh, when people when he spoke, people listened. And you know, the polar bear, he doesn't speak through here. I think, I, I like Bob. I think we're going to call him Bob in, in honor of Bob. Bob Walker. Well, Nick says a... Uh, uh... We said we were going with Glenn. Oh, Glenn. Yeah, I forgot about Glenn. Well, let's call him Bob Glenn. Glenn Bob. Hey, Glenn Bob. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot about Glenn. That's right. In honor of another friend. <laughs> he wants to change it. That's fine, but he forgot. I do. Of course I forgot. <laughs> I always forget. I have the mind of a sieve. My a mind sieve. is like a sieve. What's a sieve? It leaks. Ew. A sieve is like a colander. You just, it's like a dream, you know. Sieve. Getting that face in there. There we go. So he says, uh, I kind of like the sound of Walker the bear. Walker. Oh, Walker. Now, Walker's cool. Was Ron that Nick? Walker. Nick said that? No, uh, somebody else in the in the chat. 
Ooh, Walker. I like Walker. Because he does. He walks a lot. Through the In the course of the story. He's, he's wandering the Arctic looking for a friend. Ooh, I like Walker. Uh, when are we going to be, to be able to see the final project? Um, we're not sure yet. Um, eventually it'll be on YouTube, but I don't think we're going to premiere it there. I'm not sure. There's a couple of venues that we're talking about that we'd like to premiere it at. Um, but we haven't, we haven't figured it out. We haven't approached them yet. And we, um, I'm not even sure we're going to have them done in time. So my goal is to have it done by November. Um, that's Nick's and my goal to have this done by November. Um, that's going to be really pushing it. We've got a lot of work to do between now and then. Uh, is there a Disney style for drawing animals? Um, I don't know if there's a Disney style. You know, for me, what constitutes basically a Disney style is kind of a, it's somewhat of a realistic, it's a caricatured realism. Um, if you look at Brother Bear, if you look at Bambi, um, you know, it's, it's, it's taking reality. There we go. It's taking reality and, and just pushing it a little bit. Uh, while doing the in-betweens, do you sometimes rethink the keyframes? I do. Yeah, sometimes when I get in there, um, that's a good question. Um, sometimes when I get in there, I start in-between, I start to see, oh, maybe the spacing isn't quite right, and I'll actually go in and, uh, and I will make adjustments. Definitely. Uh, do you have a good reference for an animal anatomy book? Um, you know, there is one person that um, I really recommend. She does a lot of creature stuff, but she also knows animal anatomy really well, and that's Terrell Whitlatch. She has several books out. Was she the one that made the, uh, the Star Wars yes. Uh, creature books? Yes, that's right. I love those books. She's fantastic. Um, and a wonderful person. So, uh, so this particular polar bear, is it going to be an adult male or a teenage male? I imagine him, in my mind, he's like 20. Like, like the equivalent of a 20-year-old human. That's how I think of him. Like me. Yeah. You're not 20. I'm 20. in my 20s. Yes. <laughs> 27. Making me feel old. Just going to kind of move through this drawing. That's a that's a pretty ugly head there I got in there, but I'm just gonna can we move through this pretty quick. Uh, when you go to Canada to shoot reference material, are you planning to do some uh, Strathmore gray sketches with the markers and white white and polar bears? Oh yeah, I definitely will. We're gonna bring all of our equipment when we go up to do that. You know, whenever I do a big, a major trip like that, I bring all of my art supplies, all of my camera equipment. We bring everything. Everything? Everything. As much as we can. Most of the stuff that I bring is equipment and art supplies. Uh, is your son drawing too? Uh, do you want to answer that one? Um, not as much as I used to. Um, I mainly mess around with uh, different textures and things like that, making um, plates or logos of my own, things like that. But I haven't really gone gone to drawing that much uh, lately. Yeah, I wish I'd like yeah. to see him drawing more, but no, nope, he's not drawing that much. Uh, when animating, illustrating, or when animating or illustrating, do you always think about uh, straight against curved lines? I do. You know, it's, it's something that's kind of second nature. Um, I It's not something I put in everywhere, but um, to push things more dynamic, I'm always, you know, or in some form of that thinking. Yes, definitely. Is there a specific amount of in-betweens you draw or just what looks right? It's what looks right. So, you know, it's, it all depends on the timing of what I'm creating. So... You know, the, the in-betweens are a direct result of whatever, of the timing that I've figured out. I want to have that foot slide in. So if I scrub, boom, there we go, just boom, get that foot in there. It just kind of appears. It's called a cheat, boys and girls. Uh, this isn't an animation question, but do you ever paint with black and white first then apply color 
Um, not usually. I have, and so you know, I'll do that every once in a while. Uh, mainly digitally, I'll do that. Um, I don't do that traditionally. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a lot of people do do that. You know, it's it's a good way of figuring out each step separately along the way. Some people like to figure out their drawing, and then they want to figure out the value structure, meaning the light and dark. And then from there, they can figure out their color. And so that is a viable way of doing things, for sure. Uh, do you have any advice for someone having a creative burnout? Yeah, you know, I, I get that question a lot. And the best thing I can tell you is you just have to push through. Um, and, do, you know, if you... A lot of times, burnout comes from repetition. You're doing the same thing over and over. You're... Uh, Sometimes you might need to change the scenery. A lot of times when I get creatively burned out like that, I'll, I'll go out and do something different. I'll change up my routine. I'll go take a hike. Um, I, if I have the ability, I'll go on vacation. Um, uh, it's anything that's going to change up the way you're seeing things. you gotta, you got to shake things up sometimes. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's my best piece of advice is, you know, to one, to either just keep pushing through and you'll break, you'll break through. Um, or change up your scenery, you know, change your routine. The other thing you can do is look at other artists, be inspired. I'm constantly looking at what other artists are doing, um, to be inspired and, uh, and see how someone does this or that or whatever. Uh, um, that's a great way of changing things up because you can get inspired and say, oh man, I never thought of approaching something this way. And then you can go and try it. And then you make it your own. You're not you're not copying that other person. You're you're being inspired by them, and then you can kind of make it your own. You know, everything I animate, everything I paint, has been inspired by somebody else. Uh, do you ever get frustrated while drawing and end up rage quitting? And end up rage quitting? Is yeah. that what you just said? Rage quitting? Rage quit. Yeah. I've never heard of rage quit. That's a good term. Rage quit is actually a term that I've her plenty of times in in the gaming world where <laughs> you get so frustrated like with either in multiplayer with your friend or um i hear you or on a campaign you just like you just rage and you just like all right that's it i'm out of here yeah no i don't do that <laughs> i've got but i you know i've been doing this for a long time and so i've kind of worked through all of that so here i've got everything on ones up to this point now you can see these drawings in here as it settles in they're held on fours. I'm going to switch over from ones to twos now. The drawings I'm going to have through here now are going to be held for two frames rather than just one frame. It's the same thing I did back here. If you see where he settles in, right here, whoops, where all, the, all these drawings are on ones and then he settles in and then it goes to twos. And you, you know, you, we have that ability to jump back and forth between ones and twos. If the action really slows down, you can get away with uh, putting your drawings on twos. And so if I play this, you'll see, boom, it goes to twos right there. And then back to ones. And you don't feel it. You don't see that, that transition. So you don't always have to do 24 drawings per second. Sometimes we can get away with doing 12 drawings per second, which I always love. <laughs> but... <coughs> So here we go, and back to ones, and then boom, it's going to go to twos right in there. Where are we here? Right here. Uh, do you have any advice on joining Disney? Advice on joining Disney? Um, well, it depends on what you want to do. Um, if you're talking about animation or which I'm assuming you are. Um, my biggest piece of advice is just to make sure that whatever portfolio you're putting forward, it's the absolute best of your ability. You know, that Disney, Pixar, you know, they want only the best. And you're out there competing against a lot of other people. And so the best way... There we go. I want to get that foot down in there. The best way to do that is to have a portfolio that's going to outshine the next guy or person, you know. And uh, so you've got to you've got to make sure your work is as good as it possibly can be. 
And then it, uh, the other thing too that I find really helps is versatility. You know, if you can if you can be kind of a generalist, then it gives you a leg up. You can do multiple tasks, multiple jobs. Then that's a good thing. And uh, from our earlier uh, discussion, speaking of Brother Bear, uh, do you think Disney views the movie Brother Bear as a success or candidate uh, for their current business model, such as like characters in the parks, merchandise, cross merch? I love BB. Um, I, th I, I, I don't think it was a failure. I don't think it was a huge success. I, I wish it was more of a success than it was. Um, but, uh, I mean, they, they do have... In California Adventure and all that, there's there's a few Brother Bear attractions. I don't know if they're still there, um, but you know they're not they're not sinking a lot into it because it wasn't it wasn't the huge financial success that we had hoped it would be. And I appreciate you liking it. I liked it. <laughs> I just wish the rest of the world liked it more. Uh, how is the professional animation studio for you throughout your career? And do you think uh, what you've experienced has changed today in terms of what what's behind the doors? Um, say that one more time. Um, how was the professional animation studio for you throughout your career? What was it like working in a professional animation studio? Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess like that's what... Disney. And uh, do you think what you've experienced has changed today in terms of what's behind the, like, probably like over time, like how things have changed? Yeah, I mean, things uh, things change. I mean, obviously, when I was there, it wasn't the same studio it was in the 40s. And and now it's not the same studio it was in the 90s. Um, you know, when I was there and, you know, th and through the, I left in 2010. But, um, but at the same time, it's... I gotta bring that nose over here. At the same time, there's certain things that don't change. That artistic integrity, that that striving for wanting to do the best, to create the best, um, that's always been there at Disney, and um, we've always taken huge pride in, you know, making sure that what we're putting out is quality. It's always been about the quality. Uh, do you like the horse animation in Spirit? Uh, in Spirit. In a spirit stallion of the Sam Samaran? Yeah, I, I really like it. I had some good friends that worked on that. I thought they did a great job. Any advice on stepping out of your comfort zone? I'm an animal artist and I struggle with making my humans, well, human. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you just said it. Step out of your comfort zone. Um, I... Uh, I always recommend to people doing that because it will, it rounds you out as an artist. And, um, and it's like anything else. If you're not, if you're not as adept at something like, you know, if you're great at animals, but you're not great at humans, well then just do more humans, work on it more and, uh, and you'll get better at it. One of the great things you'll find as you get into human anatomy is that, you know, that, that comparative, the comparative anatomy that, you know, you'll find that animals and humans, we all have the same parts. They're just proportioned differently. And, uh, and uh, that really, that actually helps when you start to work out the anatomy on cats, dogs, elephants, whatever it might be, and compare them to humans, you'll start finding we all have the same parts. <clears throat> and uh, that's something I always talk about when I'm teaching, you know, animal drawing. Yeah, it's all about practice. It is. Uh, what's the best animation or art school after school for you? What's the best animation school? Yeah, what? animation or art school. Uh, In my opinion. What's the, what's the best animation or art, art school after school? After school? I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe like an art college, I guess? What's or the best animation school after school? Yeah. I don't know what that means. I, I, don't, I know don't know what know you know mean. Either. I mean, there's great animation schools, if that's what you're asking. There's online schools. There's Animation Mentor, which has uh, been really great for a lot of people that I know that have gone, um, that have partaken in that. I've never, I don't, I know some of the instructors. Um, you know, Ringling College of Art and Design, where I went to school, 
uh, has become over the years an amazing animation school. There's Cal Arts uh, in California. There's Sheridan um, in, in uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, there's Goblin in uh, in France. I believe it's in France. Um, there's some great schools around the world. Uh, what's your opinion are on art degrees these days? What's my opinion on art degrees? Well, um, I think a degree is a good thing to have. Uh, I think the world is a different place. I don't know that you... First of all, you don't have to have a degree to get a job uh, in animation. All a degree really says is that you've gone through this or that type of training and, and you've completed it, which is kind of cool. Because, you know, people that have an art degree, it tells me that they've kind of, they've, they've got discipline, they've, they've, you know, and they've worked their way through. Now, um, now that's not to say people that don't have a degree don't have discipline, but I'm just saying, um, you know, it just, it, it, right off the bat, it's going to tell me that they've, they've spent some time, you know, educating themselves. But at the same time, you can have a degree and not be able to draw your way out of a paper bag. So... <laughs> Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people with degrees that still don't know how to draw, but they, you know, they, they have the desire or they, or they, or they, sometimes they've coasted their way through. So, um, whoops. Let's see. So my opinion really on degrees is great. Get one if you feel like you need to. You now, as far as going to college, you know, I, I'm still a big supporter of college even though I'm not a supporter of the tuition that they charge, the thing I support for colleges is the idea of, you know, when you go, especially as a young person, if you're, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, just out of high school, going to college puts you, or you know, you're surrounded by like-minded individuals. If you remember, you know, if, or if you're a person in high school now, maybe you're really good at art and you want to go to art school or you want to be an artist, you're kind of alone. There might be two or three other people in your high school that you might know that like to do art, but you're kind of, you kind of, you know, you kind of, you're probably one of the odd people there. You, you know, not, a lot of people don't understand what it is that you do with art and all that kind of stuff. And, um, but when you go to college, all of a sudden you're surrounded by people that are like-minded and you've got, there's a camaraderie and through that camaraderie, you learn more. And uh, so that's one of my big things about going to college. I just think it, it helps in that way. Uh, Not to say you you know you don't you can still learn without going to college. Uh, do you draw a storyboard or write a script for Snow Bear? If you did, will you show us? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, this is just a test shot right now, so this is really not. We might work this into the story, but this is just a test shot that I'm doing just to move the bear around. And figure out what our look is going to be. We are going to be storyboarding the whole thing. Um, I'm not going to show you. I'll, I'll show you. I'll share with you some of the storyboarding, um, and we're going to share with you the entire process all the way through. The only thing I don't want to share with you because I, I just want to keep it a surprise is I'm not going to share the entire story. So we're gonna we're gonna share storyboarding. We just won't show all of it. Uh, do you have any course on clay modeling uh, for animation purposes? I don't. That is something that we're going to be working on. I have a few people that in mind that I'd like to talk to to teach it. And uh, so stay tuned. Um, but we are, that, that is something that we want to have on our, on our website for sure. So 24 drawings per second is the standard, but 12 uh, being okay as well? Yeah, if it's slow action, you can do you can get away with doing you know, one drawing for every two frames. You know, it's always 24 frames going through the camera, and it's just a matter of what the eye picks up as far as strobing. If it's really fast action, and I'm only doing one drawing every two frames, you're going to pick up on that. You know, it's your drawings aren't covering enough distance, so you need to smooth that out. That's why I went through and had to put all these on ones because he's jumping so far. From frame to frame when it's on twos but then as it slows down as in here then I can get away with doing one drawing every two frames so that's the idea I'll jump back and forth between ones and twos all the time are there any free animation softwares that would be good for beginners to get a taste of what animation entails 
Say it one more time. Uh, are there any free animation softwares that uh, would be good for beginners to get a taste of what animation entails? Uh, I don't know what I don't know what there is for free. I'm not quite sure. Actually, I'm going to add another drawing in here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't really kept up on free software, so uh, I apologize. I just I'm not I'm not sure. Um, once I found TV Paint, which is probably four years ago now, three or four years ago, I haven't really gone back. There was a piece of software I used early on. It was okay. It wasn't great. But it's called Pencil. It's kind of an open source kind of thing. And, uh, and I did some animation with that. Um, as a matter of fact, I can show you what I did. Let me see. Let me jump over to here. Uh, Nick says that a free animation software that we have not used but heard good things about are uh, Krita and OpenTunes. Oh, okay. Uh, is it Krita or Krita? K-R-I-T-A. -K I don't know. Let me show you here. I'm going in my, my Dropbox. Uh, let me see in here. Right here. This is a little, this was done with an open source. This is, and you can see it's real scribbly. The drawing pencil wasn't really great that I was using, but this is some, uh, a little bit of animation I did of our little elephant Tembo uh, a few years ago. But that was done with that open source. It's called Pencil. And uh, I never animated his tail. I never got that in there. But um, but this was done with that, and it, it worked fine. Um, I'm not. I wasn't crazy about the the line, but otherwise it worked pretty good. So there's that. Yes, and once again, it's just called pencil, and uh, and I did that. I'm sure it's improved since then. This was done probably six years ago. Uh, if you were to build your own animation table and disc, how would you approach it? Oh, I would build it exactly the same as I've got on my, my Disney desk. It's, <coughs> um, I sure, I'm, and I actually, I think those plans are floating around. If you type in Disney desk plans um, and Google that, I'm sure you can find them. But uh, my Disney desk that I've, you know, I've kept for years. I've got the same desk that I animated Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King and all that. And when I left Disney, I, I, I took the desk with me. I was able to buy it and bring it home. So, to me, it's the perfect animation desk. They're just great. Oh, somebody says that my favorite is the uh, Dancing Hippo, the animation that you made. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, what do you have a hard time uh, drawing backgrounds, humans, monsters, etc.? Um, I think, you know, we all struggle. First of all, I struggle to draw everything. We just, there's things that are less hard for me. Um, you know, even though I've taught human anatomy, all that, I still struggle with humans. And I think probably, you know, the biggest reason we struggle with humans so much is because we're so familiar with what a human looks like, right? And so... To have it off just even a little bit is it's it's it stands out. But you know, I've I've developed methods over the years of kind of working through how to work through, you know, a difficult drawing situation. Are you planning on doing more tutorials in concept art? Oh sure. I've got, um, you know, I've got a, a character design course on my website, um, but not nothing specific to, uh, you know, character design is still considered concept art. It's under the umbrella, um, but we haven't, I haven't done anything that can, that takes into a uh, consideration environmental uh, concept art or anything like that. So, which isn't one of my strengths. Um, if we do it, I might have someone else do it for me. Uh, any advice on drawing fur? Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing about fur is that you don't have to draw every hair. So whether you're rendering it as, on an illustration, you know, pick your pick the places that a lot of times it's where, you know, there's a break, there's a bend in the arm or a bend in a, in a limb. You can draw some fur coming off there, but you don't have to, you don't have to, 
draw every hair. You can you can get away with drawing clumps and and it's a lot like drawing human hair. You don't draw every hair on a human. You draw the the shapes, the big shapes that all the clumps of hair are creating. Uh, are two D movies more expensive uh, to make than three D ones? No, they're not. They're all about the same. Two D and three D are all about the same. Um, it's just a matter of you know the where the money is being put, and you know the, there's different man hours are being allocated for, to different things, but they really do basically come out to about the same cost. I think before the digital world was probably more expensive because of all the draw, because of all the animation paper and all the. All yeah, I mean, there's supplies. there's definitely a fair amount of overhead, but actually the most the the most expensive part of doing uh, of the hand drawn animated films was doing the cleanup pass. You know, it took a lot of people, a lot of hours to do cleanup, and that's the most expensive part of it. So that's one of the reasons I'm trying to develop a way that kind of skips that process keeps everything rough um, and if I were to do this on a large scale it would save probably a third of the budget almost a third of the budget went to clean up it's huge it's a huge amount not a third probably a quarter there we go uh, I'm a beginner in animation but I have a background in traditional drawing painting printmaking and sculpture uh, do I need a lot of experience in animation to get an internship in Disney or Pixar? Say that one more time. I'm a beginner in animation, yeah. but I have a background in traditional drawing, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. Do I need a lot of experience in animation to get an internship in Disney or Pixar? Well, it depends on what internship they're offering and what you're looking for. If they're offering, obviously, an animation internship, then yeah, you need the experience. Um, if you have experience doing, you know, location design, character design, that sort of thing, and they're offering an internship that covers that, um, but you don't know animation, that's okay, because a lot of the guys that go into the design side of things don't know animation either. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Uh, do you plan on doing background animation tutorials? Currently working on my final film, and my uh, sandstorms are looking a little shady. Uh, you know what? Effects animation is not is not exactly my huge strength. I can do it passably. <laughs> you know, I can, it passes. It's okay, um, but I'm not great at it. Uh, there are a few people that I know that are really great at it. And um, I'm going to approach them on uh, creating some an uh, effects animation tutorials. Uh, any abandoned uh, Disney projects you wish had made it to full length film form? Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, King of the Elves was a project that I was developing back at Disney from about 2000. 2007, 2006, 2007 till 2010. I was developing it for several years, but I was taken off the project, unfortunately, and the project was handed off to some other directors, and they weren't able to finish it either, and it kind of went away. Um, this is during the time my wife had gotten sick, and she passed away, and uh, and I had a really hard time getting back to work and getting my head back in the game, and eventually I wasn't able to do it, and I, I had to take off. That's when I left Disney. But that was a great film. It was called King of the Elves. And it was about this old man that runs this gas station out in Colorado. And uh, and these elves come up out of the forest. They've been attacked by trolls. And it's just this crazy story. And their king is dying. And, uh, and they ask for shelter. So he gives them shelter. And he can't believe what he's seeing. He's got these elves that are, you know, in Colorado. Well, this is crazy, you know. And, and, uh, and. But during the night, their king dies, and the next morning he wakes up and he finds all the elves are kind of, they're forlorn, they're sad, they don't know what to do. Um, but they, they do know that before their king died, he told them to make the old man that runs the gas station, make him their king, and he'll guide them to victory against the trolls. And so it's this old guy that has to step up and become king of the elves. And I always just love that story. Um... 
it's a guy that has to, you know, it's a story of a guy that has to go against the odds. He has to, first of all, he doesn't want to, he's got his own demons and he has to, he had to, you know, kind of defeat his own demons before he could help the elves. It's a fun story. So there's that. Uh, the Legend of Tembo, which is another movie I was working on at Digital Domain after I left Disney. Digital Domain went bankrupt while I was making the movie. And uh, that's another one that would have been great. So yes, there, there are, there are, there's quite a few. So here I have him settling in, settling into a pose. See how the drawings get really close together. I want him to settle into this pose, and then he looks back, and he's. I'm going to turn those. I'm going to turn these the color layers off, so that it doesn't that doesn't get distracting. But he's looking back. He's anticipating. He's doing an anticipation before he starts rolling backwards. So he kind of moves through and then looks back, leans forward, and then throws himself backwards. So that's what I'm working up to right now. You got anything else, Dustin? I think you like this next question. Uh, when you worked at uh, at the Disney Studio, for, um, at the Florida Studio for Disney, uh, did you ever take advantage of being so close to the theme parks for fun or even real life reference? At the Orlando uh, Disney Studio? Oh, yeah, I mean. The theme parks, did, did you ever take advantage of that for fun or. Uh, Oh, you mean going to going to the parks? Yeah. Oh, of course. They're, because they're like right next door. Oh yeah, we always went to the parks, but we yeah, and and then also for animal reference. First of all, yes, we enjoyed the parks. I took the kids to the parks all the time. Dustin grew up at the parks. Pretty much. Yeah, I was pretty lucky for him. Like when just... when somebody says I'm, I was a Disney kid. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what a Disney kid is. <laughs> yeah. So does yeah Dustin Dustin and his sister they grew up. You know, at the studio when we were making the movies, and they used to use use Austin and I's baby shields uh, during rubber band fights. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Baby's coming through. Hold your fire. But um, you know, but with Animal Kingdom and and all that there too, there was you know there was a great resource for uh, animal drawing as well for us. So I used it as much as I could. So here I have him kind of starting to go into his anticipation. Coming out of the, the, the resting pose. Um, are you going to continue uh, digital uh, painting courses? What about uh, Corel or Appropriate? Yes, so those are coming up. I just haven't been able to get to them because we've had to focus on Brother Bear. A Brother Bear. Holy moly. Sorry, Snow Bear. <laughs> that, was a, that was a weird slip. You're right there. <laughs> You had a little soup there, <laughs> I did. Um, I've just had to take a little, uh, you know, we're focusing on this right now. But those courses are coming up. We've got a whole bunch of courses coming up that we've got planned. It's just going to take us time to get to them. Um, you know, between the, uh, you know, we've got um, the other painting courses that you mentioned. Plus, I want to do another animal drawing course uh, with dogs, wolves, coyotes, foxes, and other, uh, and dogs, and let's see, um, definitely got, uh, I've got a course I want to do on birds, another animal drawing course, so yes, there's a lot that we're going to be doing. Uh, speaking of dogs, do you have any pets? I do. Achilles! Hey, Achilles! Uh, he's here. Oh, here it comes. Yes. This is actually my daughter's dog, but he stays with me. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh here he is. This is Achilles. <laughs> look up look over here. Look over here. Here he is. Oh, he's super, super, super lovey dovey. He's a really great dog. Yeah, he's awesome. So yes, this is Achilles. And we like to say Achilles heel. Achilles heel. <laughs> but he's a good guy. So yes, I have a pet, and that's him. He's going. What? What the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> A lot of people are going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. He protects me. 
every night. You know, I live by myself, so he's uh, he's always he woke me up this morning. I think someone was trying to break into my house or something. He woke me up this morning at about three in the morning, going nuts. And so I got up and went to the back door and opened it up. And I went, "Go get him!" <laughs> he took off. He chased somebody out of the yard or something. I'm not sure, <laughs> but it was pretty funny. Might have been just a squirrel. It may have been. I don't think it was a squirrel at three in the morning, but it may have been a raccoon or two. A raccoon. Um. So I'm starting to have him starting to move into getting that anticipation. Uh, do you use your dog for reference? Yeah, if I'm drawing dogs, I'll definitely use him as reference. I love drawing him. He's a good model. Is the Orlando Studio still open? No. The Orlando Studio shut down in 2004. Is the building still there, or did they tear that down? The building is still there, um, but the but the studio is not there. Uh, what's the What's the building used for nowadays? I what think I, I you know what I'm not sure. I think they have it as some executive offices, uh, which is always kind of a bummer. Yeah. Well, the digital domain building that we that we, uh, we worked at Port St. Lucie, that's now a church, apparently. Yes, it is. Is that where I want to do there? Is there a lot of competition no. when applying to be uh, an animator at Disney? I want to be a storyboard artist someday for Disney, and I'm curious. Yes, there is a lot of competition. Straight up. There's a ton of competition. I mean, it's, it's Disney, it's it's the one place that everybody wants to go to, so... Yeah, it's there is there is a lot. Um, let me just check here. I just want to see. Okay. Uh, you know, but that's just... That's the nature of the game. Um, <clears throat> everybody... Every animation student... You know, I shouldn't say every, but... I'd say 95% of the animation students I meet... You know, have a dream of working for Pixar or Disney... And, um, and you just got to realize that's, and that's all over the world. There's a lot of people that want to work for those companies. And so, um, you've got to be the top of your game. You've got to really work at it. You got to practice it. You got to love it. And, um, but you know, you can do it. Uh, I'm a, I'm the director and lead animator on a short film involving, involving some first time animators. What's a good way to set achievable goals for them so they can learn and work uh, simultaneously? Well, you're going to need somebody that can be hands-on with them. That's that's a big one right there. If they're they, you have to you have to set you have to you have to step back and look at the skill level and say, okay, um, this is where they're at, and and then you have to work within that within that that realm that that you know, that, their, that ability level, um, with good morale, people will step up and, and go for, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go for it. And the way you achieve good morale is to support them, support them in any way you can spend time with them, draw for them, um, work with them and, um, and they'll, they'll step up to the plate, you know, and, and we had a, when we were doing the, the legend of Tembo, we had a very green crew. They were all really good, but uh, you know, some of them hadn't worked on features before, or, or you know, they hadn't done this or that, and and it took patience and time, and you got to have you have to have that time built into your schedule as well for them to elevate their game. But I'll tell you, if they if they're inspired, and if you give them the responsibility, and you give them the challenge, um, and you do it in the right way. Uh, then they'll rise to the occasion. I'll guarantee it. Um, it's got to be a nurturing environment, though. They can't. They can't. You know, if if they're struggling, if it's a struggle, if they if they know that they're green, and it's held over their heads, then they're going to be working in fear. And you don't want people working in fear. That's not how you get the best work out of them. You want them to be invested in what they're doing. So support them as much as you can, and and work with them. Is a Cintiq worth the buy? Yes. Um, for me, it is. I work on a, you know, 
I'm a big proponent of having the right tool for the right job. And obviously I do a lot of digital work, whether it's animation, illustration, whatever, uh, editing. And for me, you know, I've been working with Cintiqs for 10 years because I've, everything else I've ever tried doesn't work as well. And I like the company. Um, I like the products. Uh, and so I keep buying them. This is my fourth Cintiq. And granted, it's not my fourth Cintiq because I keep having to buy new ones. They keep breaking. My original Cintiq still works that I bought ten years over 10 years ago. Um, oh, gosh, it's almost... When did I get that? It's 13 years ago. It still it still works. The one that the one that you're using right now, or the one that I'm no, using? no, this is no. These are these are. I think maybe I've gotten five Cintiqs. Um, it's just that every time they come out with a new one, I got to buy it. So I, so I get it. How, how old is the 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 one that um, the one that you're using? Yeah, the one that I'm using. Uh, it's like six seven years old, six years old. Yeah, that thing is heavy. Yeah, but it's a good one. It, it is good. All right, so now you see him moving. He kind of moves through this pose, and then he start. He's kind of slowly moving through this pose, and then he's going to move into that anticipation, right there. Uh, does Disney hire people that are off location, or do they just hire in house? No, they'll they'll they're starting to hire off location now as well. But it depends on the job. It really does. What does it mean by uh, off location? Like not if they're uh, not in the studio. They're, they're, the studio. The remote. Gotcha. They're, they're remote. Almost like a, like um, um, freelancer. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, but it depends. I think they're. Um, I'm not sure if they're doing as much remote story work. Although I know that you know that's a, a lot of studios are doing that. Um, I know they do remote, like visual development, a lot of pre-production stuff. Um, as far as uh, I got to get this to come down here, um, but when we're talking about production stuff, um, like animation and, and that sort of thing, I'm not sure if they're doing anything remote there. I doubt it. But I could be wrong. If anyone out there that works, that's watching and works for Disney, let me know. I'm curious. Uh, do you like using Photoshop for coloring or painting? For coloring or painting in Photoshop, my characters or the animation. I I, I use Photoshop all the time. I'm not sure I understand unless you're not familiar with what I do. Um, I yes, I do Photoshop all the time. All the time. Um, whoever asked that, if you're not familiar, go check out my website. It's creatureartteacher.com. Um, and there's a ton of digital paintings in there that I've done in Photoshop. Uh, if you go through my gallery. Uh, once again, it's creatureartteacher.com. Go, go check that out and you'll see um, there's a lot of stuff in there. I've got a course on there on painting in Photoshop. My approach to painting in Photoshop. So there's that. Uh, do you have a video or course on timing your animation with music or voices? Uh, I don't. I think I cover it a little bit in my animation course, but it's not something I've really focused on, specialized in. And that's a great idea. I've actually had several people ask me about that. And um, it is something that I'm going to cover. I might do it as a supplement to the current animation uh, course that I have. And we can just amend it. Uh, but it's... Um, that's definitely a great, it's a great, uh, there we go. Well, if you need a voice for the course, just let me know. I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, when you worked for Disney, uh, do you think you really grew as an artist there? I did. I, I absolutely did. Uh, improvement in crea creativity-wise, do you think it was a good working space? Yes. I, I loved everything about working at Disney. Um, working, it was some of the best people, some of my best friends are, are people that I met, you know, when I was working at Disney. Um, 
they're like they're family to me. They're brothers. They're sisters. They're, um, but not just that. They're incredible, incredible artists. And um, ah, I gotta drop that eye down a little bit. They're amazing artists, and I grew as an artist by being around them. So yes, I I grew. I remember when I started out as an intern. Uh, when I interned back in 1988, uh, my internship. I remember thinking. I think I learned more in that first two weeks than I did the, in the in the previous two years working up to that point. It was just amazing the the caliber of talent that was there, and and it, you just can't help but soak it in. Uh, when you animate, do you watch uh, some references before putting it on paper? Um, sometimes it depends on uh, what I'm animating. You know, for this bear animation, I didn't. I just had it in my head. Um, and so I just kind of moved forward doing that. Uh, that's a little too big. But sometimes if I, if there's a complicated action that I'm not quite sure how to handle, I'll either shoot it myself, uh, with, on video, uh, and use that as reference, or I'll, I'll try to find reference on YouTube or, uh, you know, or any other kind of video that I can, that I can find and be inspired. I've just started a 3D anim animated short. Uh, Pre-production is basically falling all on me because it's my idea and I am the only one who can draw. Any advice? Say that one more time. I've just started a 3D animated short. Uh, Pre-production is basically falling all on me because it's my idea and I'm the only one who can draw. Any advice? Well... My biggest piece of advice is be, even though you're the only one that can draw and you say it's your idea, if you have people helping you, let them give you suggestions. Um, that's the biggest, you, you don't take it all on yourself and you don't push your idea at the expense of other people's ideas. Be open-minded to other ideas that might be better um, because it, that's going to help distribute the workload. It's going to make the final product better um, and it will improve the morale of everybody working with you it'll feel everyone will feel like they're contributing you don't want to especially in pre-production you don't want to be the one person that kind of lays everything out um at the you know at the expense of everybody else's opinion and then all they're doing is executing your idea there's nothing worse for a morale in a group of people than having something like that but when everyone is contributing and helping to make the idea better, that's when you get a great product and, and, and you'll get great work from people. So okay. take, say, even though you're the one doing all the drawing, take ideas from people. As a team, it's a team effort. So exactly. So everybody has to work together. Usually it's not, usually a hierarchy doesn't work, work too well, especially in a, in a business like that. Usually people helping each other out uh, makes a team even better. Always. There's even a guy that, um, that I worked with for like two weeks. Yeah. And he was struggling with this one with this one shot. And I and I came up to him because I had an idea on, on how he could possibly fix that. I'm like, hey, I have this ID you can probably use. Uh, uh, you want me to show you? He's like, if I need help, I'll ask my leader. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he got let go like a few days later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just insecurity. Yeah. There's no room for insecurity in animation. That's the other thing, too. You can't be insecure. You're going to have ideas that suck. You're going to have ideas that are great. And people are going to tell you when they suck, and they're going to tell you when they're, when they're great. And you can't, you've got to take it on the chin and grow from it and learn from it, and know that none of it's personal, and you, and you get better. Uh, what daily exercises would you recommend for improving uh, design skills for characters and visual development? Designing. Just do it. You know, there's, there's no... I never did exercises or... I just... I, I learned through doing it. The, the process of actually designing. You know, sit down and... and Try to, you know, give yourself 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour before you have to do whatever you need to do and challenge yourself to design a character. Look in a, read an article in a magazine about somebody and without any pictures and 
take what you f read about that person and design what they might look like. Um, I'm always a proponent of when you're doing character design, um, you need to at least have some kind of backstory to go with that character so you have something to design um, rather than just physical attributes. You want to know who they are, what they're about. Um, and uh, so that it's kind of fun to you know read a book, read a magazine, whatever, and and come up with some ideas for what someone might look like. Uh, are your courses appropriate for an 11 year old? She is, she's in love with your live streams and drawing, at least what we've seen so far. Yes, my, my courses are exactly like my live stream. So if, if my live stream, if you feel like my live streams are appropriate, then my courses are appropriate. Uh, how did you feel about interviewing Proko? Oh, Proko's great. We we really hit it off. We we had a great time. I um, I think I made a friend. <laughs> we really had a really good time, and uh, I look forward to seeing him again. I want to collaborate more with him. He's fun. He's an amazing artist, an absolute amazing artist. And that's one thing, you know, as a guy that works by himself now, myself, I do miss collaborating with other artists like I used to, at Disney. And uh, so when I got to hang out with and draw and paint with Proko, um, you know, I kind of satisfied that part of my soul to get together with somebody else. It was nice. It would be cool if uh, Proko makes a uh, trip over here. We can show him our neck of the woods. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's in the works, actually. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. We want to do a little painting demo and uh, together. And so we might be doing that in the next year. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, what's your current resolution uh, you're using on your or canvas size? Uh, it's 1080, 1920 by 1080. Regular uh, HD. All right. So I'm going to have him... I'm going to do that. <laughs> what? So, so then Nick wrote. What did Nick, Nick write? Collaborate with other artists. Why am I chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> with multiple question marks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we're getting there. You can see all these drawings, they get really close sometimes, but you've got to move through them. Uh, do you ever get art block? I do get art block sometimes. I don't, I don't get it very often. You know, I'm, I'm, always, I'm usually pretty inspired to draw something. Um, but it happens to the best of us and when you when when art block hits you just gotta a lot of times I force myself just to sit and start drawing something even if it's just a doodle I'll, I'll just mindlessly draw and then usually that breaks the block I'll, I'll start getting inspired and then things will start popping into my head and then you know then there's no problem after that have you ever met the um, painter James Gurney I've never met him but I'm a huge fan of his work Matt it's funny you mentioned that because I was I was just watching some of his videos on YouTube uh, like two days ago. I'm very familiar with his work. I love everything he paints. Uh, do you know Corey Loftus? And if so, uh, what do you think about his work? He was the art director. Uh, yes, I do know Corey Loftus. And I, yeah, I love his work. I think he's freaking genius. Freaking genius. Freaking genius. I think he's awesome. Is animating on paper dead completely, or do you know animators that still do it? Oh, yeah, I still know. I know animators that are still doing it. I mean, it's, obviously, it's not as prevalent as it used to be. But I think Andreas Desha, Andreas Desha, who's uh, uh, a well-known animator from Disney, he's not at Disney anymore. He, he animated Scar and uh, Jafar from Aladdin and... Um, a lot of the villains, you know, he always did the villains, but um, he's an amazing animal animator, and he's doing a little uh, tiger short 
a short with a, you know, I think it's called Mushka. Look it up. It's called Mushka. And I think that's all being animated on paper. By Andrea Stacia. Mushka. And he's brilliant. All right. Getting there. I think I'm past this point already, but Nick uh, messaged this to me. But uh, have you ever met the painter James Gurney? You just asked, and you just asked me that. Yeah. You just asked me that like two minutes ago. Yeah, and Nick just sent sent me <laughs> message of that question. What? I just I Nick. like two minutes ago I was just talking about James Gurney. Yeah. Oh. I, I think Nick uh, didn't get to that point yet. I don't oh, think. gotcha. I haven't met him, but I'm a big fan. Uh, what kind of experience do you need to become a story artist? Uh, well, you know, you need to know how to storyboard, and you need to understand story, structure, character. Um, you need to know how to draw. You need to under have a, at least a, a basic understanding of acting, animation, because it's all entailed in story artist um, and in storyboarding. To me, I think story artists need to be some of the best artists on the film because they they really do need to um they the, the, a story artist drawings are the first time the written word becomes an image and ends up on the screen and so you have the power of cinematography a character design acting everything animation it's all part of storyboarding and uh so i think you need to be adept at it i think the best story artists are the ones that understand this they understand timing cutting pacing um acting all of it and uh so yeah you need to it, it's to me it's the most important one of the most important visual jobs on the on the on the production and somebody actually made a, a good point on the uh, uh 2d animating with paper but um the the game Cuphead was entirely animated uh, with paper. Oh, it was paper? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, in fact, um, um, one of the uh, girls we met at the uh, at the CTN. Yeah. Um, she actually had one of the um, um, the drawings. One of the draw, one of the full flip packets. Oh, that's of, cool. Of um, of the hand animation, like the originals uh -huh. of it. And it was, it was pretty cool. Was that like, is wait, cool. It was, it was, and I actually asked her, like, wait, it was done by paper? She's like, yeah, I'm like, holy crap. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do you listen to music before or while animating, and do you get excited about it? Uh, I listen to music at this stage, when I'm in between. Um, when I'm doing the actual animation... Especially if there's dialogue, I don't listen to music. I can't. Um, I think it occupies the same part of the brain or something, and it just, I, I'm not able to actually concentrate on the animation. It's really weird. Um, but once I get past getting all the basic, the structure down, then I can kick back, and when, I, when it comes time to doing the in-betweening and the breakdowns and all that, then I am able to just kind of relax and listen to music and have him start to close his eyes here is there a difference between visual development and story development and if so uh, what is it yeah story development is just that it's developing the story so a lot of it takes place in the writing um, visual development is just that you're developing the visuals of of that the world the story all of that so story development sometimes can overlap with visual development because a lot of visual development will come out of story. and But also a lot of times the story, someone will come up with an idea in visual, you know, during the visual development stage. Uh, and they'll go, oh my gosh, we didn't think about that. And then it can, and it can make, it, make, make its way into the story itself. And they can rewrite according to that. So they both kind of inform each other. But they are different things. One is more written based. The other is visual based. What are the fundamentals of storytelling? The fundamentals of storytelling? There's a lot. Um, 
the biggest thing for me, I mean, I'm a big advocate of structure and there's a whole bunch of stuff that I can't, that's a whole other class. And uh, actually, if you, if you look at our website, we've got a whole course on story and structure writing. And, um, uh, but for me, the biggest, the biggest part of story is, is believability. It's honesty. It's great character. If you can come up with great characters and great characters can only happen through honesty, through you kind of taking your own experiences and imparting them into the character. Um, and I think a great story also has great irony. Um, I'm always, I'm always looking for the irony in a story. You know, like when we were doing t Tembo, um, it's, you know, the irony in that story is here's, you know, Tembo was this peaceful Bambi-esque little elephant that lived in the savanna. And um, the last thing he ever wants to do is fight anybody. He's just a, a lovable wonderful little character and the irony of that story is he's captured and he's made a battle elephant and he has to fight his way to get home so you know it, when you can take those types of situations it puts characters in odd positions uh, and it makes great drama sorry go ahead okay. uh, do you know Jake Parker Jake Parker mm -hmm. no Uh, can you recommend any animation books? Yeah. Uh, there's always, you know, The Illusion of Life is always my favorite. Right up there. Uh, by Frank uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, done back in the 80s. Um, uh, 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 Richard Williams' animation book, I think, is fantastic. I can't remember what it's called. Someone out there I know does. Um yeah, so I mean, either of those two are probably the best. You'll you'll be you'll be doing well if you can get those two. And it, and the principles in those books apply to three D animation as well, not just two D. So we're almost there. We're slowly getting there. Are there any Whoops. books you recommend for storytelling? I don't know what just happened. Uh oh. What'd you do? That was weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what just happened. What'd you do? Uh, nothing. I'm just drawing. Well, apparently your drawing did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Dustin? Uh, I'll check here. Just give me, give me a second here. Um, are there any books that you recommend for storytelling? Yes. And, and you know, for as far as, like, script writing, there's... Um, there's Story. Uh, it's called Story by Robert McKee. Um, that's a wonderful book, and it really talks about the basics of script writing and what makes a good story and all of that. Um, Save the Cat is another one that's really great, and that's, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Zach, no, it's not, it's not, Blake, Blake Snyder. I almost said Zach Snyder. That's a director. Uh, Blake Snyder wrote Save the Cat. Um, which is, it's just really great kind of fundamentals of, of what it takes to write a script that are really easily kind of followed. Um, I learned a lot from both those books. All right. So now we've got pretty much some smooth action through here. Let's go ahead and play it. Now he'll jump, jump, and he'll settle. There, boom, right through there. See, no more sticky points. There we go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that feels pretty good. Awesome. Right through there, boom. So there's just a couple more in there that I've got to hit um, that I'll probably hit further down the road I'm probably going to call it here pretty quick because um i'm flying out to connecticut tomorrow and i still need to get all of our gear together but i just wanted to see through here there we go don't need to pack it up there he is rolling over these are all on twos i think these are okay to stay on twos and then he's got to settle into this into that pose so this will be the next section through here that i draw i think 
get him all settled into place. But there he is. So that's feeling pretty good. And uh, next week, I'm hoping that we'll be painting this next week. You guys will be able to watch us there. I've still got a couple of things. i got to get that effects animation working better with the snow, the way the snow piles up. We still need to get his footprints in there. Um, but at least we've got pretty much all the drawings in. Um, this is 17 seconds of animation. So um, it's taken probably a little longer than normal only because I've had to jump around doing other things. But, um, uh, but yeah, this is... This feels pretty good. This is what we did today. That settle in through there. But are there any other questions before I go? I'm going to sign off. It'll be a quick one today. You got anything else, Dustin? Uh, there's there's a whole ton. Where do you want me to start? Well, wherever you, whatever you think is interesting. Any tips for a long time digital 2D animation guy transitioning back to paper on a on a light box? Um, let me see that. Any tips for a long time? digital 2d animation guy transitioning back to paper on the light oh, box you know it, it's it's like riding a bike it's going to come right back to you um my biggest thing is you know don't use that don't use that light box don't turn the light on um i never use the light the light on the light box try to see that animation that's my biggest tip try to see it rather than looking through the paper in it and between lines and Doing it that way, I always make sure to keep that light turned off and just flip the paper and see the animation and draw where that animation needs to go. That's probably my biggest, you know, my biggest tip right there. What else you got? Uh, which pen tab do you recommend? Pen tab? Pen tab. Let me see. I don't know what you mean by pen tab. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? I don't have a favorite animal. Come on. I'm an animal guy. I like all animals. But I do like bears and big cats. I like them a lot. Obviously, I draw them enough. <laughs> he mainly likes lions, tigers, and bears. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, lions, tigers, and bears. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to get going. Um, it was kind of short today. We well, we did an hour and four, th 13 minutes. So... Um, once again, that's pretty much it for all the drawing that you're going to see. So that was a couple weeks worth of drawing. And uh, next week, when we get together... Um, hopefully we'll be doing some color or maybe I'll do some painting or something. We'll take a break from the animation, but I really appreciate you guys coming out and watching and participating. And if I didn't get to your question, uh, just come back again and hopefully we'll get to it next time. But, uh, you know, um, Tuesday I'll be back on, on Facebook. So if you want to join me over there, um, I'll be doing something. And then, uh, and then once again, we'll be back on YouTube live next Thursday and uh, until then, get out and do some drawing, do some painting, put some beauty back into the world, do something good for somebody else. And I will talk to you. <laughs> Here's our awkward goodbye, because I have to find the button, the stop streaming button. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys have a great week. And hopefully I see you guys on Tuesday over on Facebook. Bye. We'll say goodbye, Dustin. Bye.